So let's talk about depression and anxiety and what we know about neuroinflammation and depression and anxiety, and then move into eating disorders and jump off from there. But if you look at the mainstream paradigm for depression and anxiety, this is a neurotransmitter issue. And I think this paradigm is severely lacking, like so many other mainstream Western paradigms. Perhaps the LDL cholesterol paradigm could be characterized as similarly incomplete. But studies like this one, I think, really challenge us to ask pretty profound questions here. So this was a meta-analysis of cytokines. These are cell signaling molecules. These are like the text messages that immune cells send to each other in the human body. There were 24 studies looked at in this meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is a group of studies. It is a study of studies. So there were 24 studies involving unstimulated measurements of cytokines meeting the DSM, that's the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, criteria for major depression, uh, that were included in the meta-analysis. And what you find here is that there were significantly uh, noted differences in depressed subjects relative to controls in IL-6 concentrations and TNF-alpha. So that is tumor necrosis factor alpha. So there were significantly higher concentrations of TNF-alpha. The P is massively significant, less than 0.00001. Uh, and also, they go on to say that IL-6 concentrations were significantly higher. Again, the p-value is less than 0.00001 in depressed subjects compared with control subjects. Um, there were no significant differences among depressed and non-depressed subjects for the other cytokines. So their conclusion, this meta-analysis reports significantly higher concentrations of pro-inflammatory cytokines, TNF-alpha and IL-6 in depressed subjects compared with control subjects. While both Positive and negative results have been reported in individual studies. Uh, this meta-analytic result strengthens the evidence that depression is accompanied by activation of the IRS, which they say is the inflammatory response system. So then we have to ask the question, what is stimulating the IRS, the inflammatory response system, and which comes first? Because though there is a correlation here, we must always question number one, is correlation causation? I think in this case, there's a pretty solid mechanistic reason to suggest that the, this inflammation in the brain could be a problem and could be mechanistically linked to the pathologies uh, associated with depression. But we also have to ask, which direction does the arrow of causation go? Or does it go both directions? Is it that people who are depressed are somehow more stressed and that is causing inflammation in the brain? Or is it that inflammation in the brain may trigger depression, anxiety, or even eating disorders in those who are susceptible, in those whose Achilles heel is that mental illness manifestation. And I think that the second uh, possibility is quite reasonable and very probable. And that is, I think, the most compelling hypothesis here, but that is the limitation of what we know at this point. But I think that this challenges us to expand our conceptualization of these mental health illnesses. If indeed depression, anxiety, eating disorders, psychotic disorders, schizophrenia, delusions are connected with neuroinflammation or are caused by neuroinflammation, the questions then become number one, what causes neuroinflammation? And number two, how do we correct that? How do we treat that neuroinflammation, either with a pharmaceutical or with a dietary intervention? If indeed dietary is a major factor in what is causing that neuroinflammation in the first place, this is a very fascinating uh, set of hypotheses to explore. So here's another study. Interleukin-6, that's the same cytokine that was elevated in those who are depressed, is elevated in the cerebral spinal fluid of suicide attempters, and it's related to symptom severity. So this is quite interesting. IL-6 in the CSF was significantly higher in suicide attempters than in healthy controls. Patients who performed violent suicide attempts displayed the highest IL-6. Furthermore, there was a significant positive correlation between the MADRAS, which is a measure of depression severity, and the CSF IL-6 levels. In all patients, IL-6 and TNF-alpha correlated significantly with 5-HIAA, which is a precursor for or a breakdown product of serotonin, and HVA, which is a breakdown product of uh, dopamine in the CSF, but not with MHPG, which is a, another metabolite, 3-methoxy-4-hydroxyphenylglycol. Um, and they go on to say cytokine levels in plasma and CSF were not associated, and plasma and patients with increased blood-brain barrier permeability did not exhibit elevated cytokine levels. So that's interesting. So they propose a role for CSF IL-6 Interleukin-6, a cytokine, a text message sent between immune cells in the brain in the symptomatology of suicidal behavior, possibly through mechanisms involving alterations of dopamine and serotonin metabolism. That's the 5-HIAA and the HVA in the CSF component there. So is it possible 
that neurotransmitters are involved in these pathologies, but that they are not the proximate event. They're not the first event. It's not that your serotonin gets broken when you have depression or dopamine gets broken when you have a psychotic disorder or that these are disordered when you have suicidality or a suicide attempt related to mental, uh, mental unhealth. But the question is, could inflammation be causing alterations in these neurotransmitters? And could that then be manifesting in a certain way? I think it's quite possible. But then we have to take the why behind the why behind the why into account and ask, okay, what is causing, what is causing inflammation in the brain? So we'll get to that. But I think that's a really important question to hold in mind. Is there an infection? No, these people don't have, they don't have abscesses in the brain. So what is causing inflammation in the brain? And I think we have to say then, what is causing inflammation in the body? Because the most compelling probability is that the inflammation in the brain is coming from the body. It's coming from some part of the body. These immune cells all coordinate. They all talk. Though these are brain-derived macrophages called microglial cells that reside in the brain, they are connected. They can send text messages to immune cells through the rest of the body. And there's a blood-brain barrier through which these text messages can pass. Those are the cell cables. Those are the, that is the transit uh, highway by which these cytokines, these cellular signaling molecules can move into the brain. So it probably comes from outside of the brain. Well, where does it come from in the body? It's pretty good evidence it's coming from the gut, like so many things do. And like so often we are back to the gut, but pause there, dog ear that page, we will come back to it. 